Yeah, I promised Emilio Longo uh, that I would uh, share his uh, website with my viewing audience here, and then I and I did it once, and then I straightforwardly immediately forgot to do it the second time out. So I want to make sure I do it again today. Emilio Longo interviewed me for six hours, and um, he's made that tape available, I think, in three two-hour segments on his um, uh, website, as I understand it. And I haven't gone to look there yet, but he sent me those three-hour segments, and uh, I understand that he's offering it now. So it's skill-based art, colon, a learning resource for art students and artist teachers. And you'll, be able, you'll see that on your screen. So, good. Uh, I, I'm hoping it'll be bite-sized, but it was a six-hour interview, and I don't know that he edited it. I think his plan was not to edit it at all, uh, except for parts where we had to restart because of some screw-up or, or other, but that's, that was already just you know segments that we knew were going to disappear. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's that. Um, Today's question um, comes from Gabriel, uh, and um, this is, I think, one of, this is actually might be a follow-up from one of the previous videos, I'm trying to remember which one, though. He said, I have another question for you, Paul. What do you think about the cost of modern atelier education, like Grand Central, Florence Academy, etc.? For me, it seems that their prices are just too high, especially if you think that Gamble used to teach for free at least according to what I read from Stapleton Kern's uh, experience with him. The only great master I can think of now that actually teaches free in 2019 is Odd Nerdrum. What are your thoughts on that? Should professional atelier education be more affordable, especially for working class people? Uh, you know, <laughs> as much as I... Um, so many, so many issues here. It's so interesting. Uh, my, from the very beginning, um, my efforts have been to try to keep my prices low so that anybody could study with me. And I have to admit that if you're doing it on the atelier basis, it's, it's hard to put in the number of hours, the number of days that it requires to work with people and lose that much painting time without some charging. And I only say that because I come from absolutely no support from my family. And um, if it weren't for Gamble, and Stapleton Kearns is right, if it weren't for Gamble uh, being free, and in one sense, he, he wasn't free, he was doing a duty, you know, but you were his family, you became, you became very important to him. Uh, while there were no, you know, he wasn't sitting there putting this in front of you without, without an agreement. You could make an agreement with him to do stuff. I offered to do stuff for him all the time and very rarely was called on to do it. Just out of, you know, gratitude for what he was doing. But um, because I came from absolutely no money at all, I, I uh, want, I chose to make my, my, um, my uh, studio uh, as inexpensive as I possibly could. And I, I really have not been particularly smart about how to do that. Um, I find that even as inexpensive as I am, and I've made sure that I'm never above halfway uh, up to the, I think, the lowest competitor. I don't think I'm even half, half of uh, There's There's so many issues that come from that. Even though I've done that, I find that some people still can't afford to study with me. And uh, that really, to me, is completely frustrating. Now, I have, I have scholarship people, uh, and... Uh, but the studio is based on a, a certain number of people to sort of survive it all, you know, paying all the bills, the models, and all those things, um, and, you know, the rents. Uh, but the, uh, for the building, I wish I owned the building. That would probably be a smarter way to do this whole thing. But so I've had this, I've lived in that place, but I have provided scholarships, and I probably will do it some more, but I have to figure out how to build that in. Uh, I have looked in the past uh, a little bit to some of my alumni asking them if they would be willing to be um, some of my better healed alumni, be willing to be part of some sort of a scholarship endowment. And I haven't gotten through uh, that uh, research yet and got to a point where I've actually created it, but that's one of the alternatives for me. Uh, that would be need-based and then it would be on the part of the person there, it would be performance-based. Um, so if you didn't perform, you wouldn't be lasting very long. Uh, so that, that kind of thing. So I am working on that. I wish I could do better. But my answer is the same as yours. What's happening today is that we're leaving the Gamble model. These aren't ateliers anymore. They're becoming schools. And they look like they're massively for-profit. 
And frankly, if I liked the content that was coming out of them, I probably wouldn't despise it. I mean, because the free market actually has always been a great source of uh, expansion of uh, information. But uh, I think the arts are unique, and I think that by the time you get to uh, working with, say, three people in one year, you're going to be as confused as heck. Um, there is no unity to, the, to those kinds of... Uh, I mean, every single person... I find my own students. I had to tell them, don't be teaching. Don't be teaching... I'm sorry, my student mentors. Don't be teaching my students. You know what teaching is? That's when you tell them what you think, <laughs> when you tell them your theories. Because you're so different from me, you cannot be in the same place as me. And you're, you know, you're, you're, you're 25 years my junior. How about you don't involve yourself there? You're good for one thing, and that is walk into the room and tell a person where what's least like in his picture when you're when you're looking at the thing as a whole. Then you're serving, you know, doing a great service. But I'm suggesting that when in these schools that you wind up with three different people thinking three different ways, you wind up with the same effect the Julian Academy had, the Academy Julian. And that is that you wound up with people being completely confused. Bougar would come in one day and say, draw more. Somebody else would come in, Boulanger, and say, color more. And they'd be at complete odds with each other. And they'd be looking at the same pictures. I mean, it was, the setup was, of course, nuts uh, from that point of view. Uh, and it's surprising to me that those artists actually weren't more savvy about the way they were thinking. But my point to you, though, is that this has turned into a, simply, it looks like to me, a, a for-profit operation where the goals aren't aesthetic anymore as much as they're... Uh, as much as they're about money, making money and uh, you know making the retirement or whatever it is, so I'm I'm yeah I'm not uh, going to pretend I think otherwise. I'm with you, and I know that I, I would not have been able to study in any of these places uh, as a young student. I do suggest though that you th you think through the idea of um, of talking with people and finding out what what's out there though uh, in terms of what can be arranged when you do come from uh, straightened circumstances. Um, you know, I don't like to encourage people not to work, you know, but I've found any number of times I have students who, 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 who um, uh, could and don't work, for example, through the summer when they're not in the school program, the, the, the atelier program. And um, the sort of thing like painting houses that I did uh, in the summertime. Uh, because I know that in the course of a summer you can make a ton of money if you, if you just find yourself, um, you know, put yourself in the position of, of, of painting uh, houses. Just as one example, I doubt that you can do it in a lot of other minor jobs, but I think when I was, even in the 70s, I think I was making $100 a day painting houses. So, um, which is, you know, it gets you enough money in the course of a summer to do well, in addition to which you're outside there having a great time on the wall, trying to not fall off a scaffold. <laughs> Obviously not. Uh, if, you, if you fall off, pretend you didn't hear this, okay? Don't blame me for giving you bad advice. Uh, I wish I could do it for free. I don't do pictures that require other people to work on them. I mean, I have had, had pictures like that in which I've had uh, students work with me. Uh, but the difficulty with that as a general approach um, that I did hear somebody else was trying to do, I, I saw that online, oddly enough, when I was digging around, uh, that somebody was looking for artists to help him with his work, rather, and I just can't, there's no way in the world I would work with somebody who didn't, hadn't worked with me, who didn't know what I was doing. It'd be like asking a Verrocchio student to help uh, a, 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 per, a Perugino, the Perugino studio do its stuff. I mean, they wouldn't be helpful. Uh, they wouldn't be working along the same lines uh, and so on. So that part sort of goes out the window. Um, and others, I mean, I don't know. I mean, if I, if I actually was in a position to create, if I had a, a, you know, a vast piece of property in the position to create, simply have people live inexpensively on my property, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even hesitate to create a, the odd nerdrum model if, that's what, if it is what I think it is, sort of a barracks or some other kind of living situation and then just some studio space or something. Uh, and uh, let people make it, make, make shift, you know, as they can. So, but I'm with you on that. I, it's a tough thing. And uh, uh, Gamble did this incredible service. I don't, I don't know what he would have charged in those days. Uh, I know that uh, it wouldn't have made a bit of difference because there was no help from any of my folks. <laughs> and as it was, I really just barely survived. Even, even at one point, we you know, I, I got married, had a, had a wife working, and uh, it, still was, um, it still was a challenge. And um, so, yeah, um, I get it. I don't know what else to say, except I, I, I really wish people would revert back to the model of ateliers. And, um, and uh, you know, teach a handful of students at some minimal cost. 
uh, I know that if you had only a handful of students, you don't need as big a space. It often can be done just in the space you're already in. And uh, frankly, we need the variety. We don't need two or three or four guys just sort of dominating this stuff. We don't need institutions and schools out there. Institutions and schools, Gamel said it, and I totally agree with him, are the death of, of, of art education. Uh, what you need is long uh, uh, discipleship with somebody who you, you greatly respect. And um, I wish you well in, in, in digging that up. Uh, Gabriel, thank you for these thoughtful comments. I recognize your difficulties, so to speak, or those of friends of yours. Uh, talk to me sometime. Uh, be sure to share, comment, uh, anything you like, uh, whatever the other ones are. Uh, uh, do subscribe, do like, uh, and send to your friends, though. Uh, more than anything else, I, could appreciate, I appreciate that. I'm just getting started this, I think I've said before, and I um, at the marketing side of this, and I only do it, as I said, because I want to... I have recognized that I have under, undervalued, number one, the importance of, 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 being, uh, of being available to the public out there, to being seen, and then number two, of just uh, undervaluing the, the quality of, 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 of what I have to offer itself, and I will not be doing that anymore, so here I am. But I am not up to 60,000 anything. I'm up to hundreds maybe of views right now. So anything you can do to help is hugely appreciated if you understand where I'm coming from. So do that, and thank you very much. Next time.